Kastuba Das here with a big announcement for Wisdom of the Sages listeners. This August will be Ashram Month at the Super Soul Farm. Simple ashram living, rising early, morning kirtan, yoga and pranayama, healthy vegan and vegetarian meals, farm seva and being immersed in nature, and then gathering in the evenings for kirtan and readings. Plus, each week we'll have a lead presenter teaching a different facet of the philosophy and lifestyle of bhakti yoga. Week number one will be the exceptional bhakti lata teaching a course called The Beauty of Bhakti, bringing the culture of love and devotion into our lives. Week number two is my brother from another mother, Raghunath, teaching Falling in Love with Divinity, the Bhakti Yogi's method for opening the heart. And week number three is myself with a course called Following the Path, examining the history and teachings of Bhakti Yoga. You can come for one, two, or all three weeks, and the pricing is by donation. For more dates and information, go to wisdomthesages.com slash events. Peace. Hey Raghunath, tell everyone about our Patreon community. Sure, Kastuba. The Wisdom of the Sages Patreon community is an incredible online yoga resource. If you like the type of yoga, wisdom, and culture we share on the show, then our Patreon community is a great next step. This is a listener-supported podcast, and any level of sponsorship will unlock a wide range of live and archived classes, talks, and even workshops. Raghunath teaches, I teach, and we have a host of other excellent teachers on topics ranging from yoga philosophy, asana classes, storytelling, Ayurveda, kirtan, cooking, meditation, and a lot more. We even have an incredible online bhakti 12-step recovery group. So if you want to check it out, go to patreon.com slash wisdom of the sages. All right, let's get it on. Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Live from Super Soul Farm, this is Wisdom in the Stages, a daily yoga podcast with your host, Raghunath, and co-host and senior educator at the Bhakti Center in New York, Kastuba Das. Welcome to the show. Welcome, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to today's study of the Srimad Bhagavatam and critique on Krishna conscious fashion. Oh, no, don't go there, Raghunath. Come on. We were, me and Kostuba were all over it before the show started, before you guys even came in. And I want to apologize for everybody who sits on Zoom in the waiting room. It seems like the waiting room should have some type of entertainment. It's just like, you just sit there and wait till we free you. And then you can show your faces. You know what I mean? I Zoom trust should be- our audience that they're using that time well, Raghuna. And we don't need to feed them some kind of No, I could get a pictures of Krishna. You could have lectures. You could have Kirtan. Maybe Zoom should do mm-hmm. Does Zoom have anything like that, Mara? With the waiting room, you're a technological genius. <laughs> uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, I guess I could look so. into it. I, I'm par- I always feel slightly guilty. For I them assume they're chanting there. their japa. They're, they're probably not. Their japa. <laughs> they're probably not. <laughs> I, I want to get. I want to get in. I want, why won't they let us in? Look at Catherine A. She's taking a cold plunge right now. Okay, Raghunath, we're already just squirreling out like crazy. <laughs> Mara, are there any announcements today? Yeah, we have a Bhakti Recovery Group meeting at noon today. Okay. And I think there's some stuff to announce at Super Soul Farm. Yeah, 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 yeah. There is a Kirtan Academy with me and Madhu, which is filling up. When is so that? If you, if you, it's, it's July 6th through the 10th. It's like a, oh. what is it, Rachel, Wednesday through a Sunday? It's like a big... Big fat thing, wonderful thing. So if people thing. come for the July Fourth thing, they can tack that onto the to it. Yeah, yeah, we could do that too. Our July Fourth thing, I'm really looking forward to. Is Moto going to be there for that? He couldn't. He couldn't. Oh. He couldn't. But we're going to have lots of cure time. Looking forward to that. And July six through ten. So if you'd like to add some cure, if your yoga teacher want to add cure time to your class, or if you'd like to learn how to lead cure times, or cure times just I like, you know, for years before I even taught yoga, I would just play harmonium for like personal meditation. Like right. when Rachel comes and visits, she just sits in front of her deities and chants in front of her deities. She's not putting on a show. She's just doing it as an mm-hmm. offering. It's nice. So anyway, check out 
wisdomofthesages.com and go to Sage Academy tab and you'll see all the offerings we have going on. We hope to hang with you this summer. Get to know you better. We got lots of pillows for pillow fights here. Okay. Are you ready, Kastuba? Any other announcements? That's it. Okay. Ready for a nugget? A nugget of wisdom? From, uh, Continuing Waldo. on with Ralph Waldo Emerson week. Mm-hmm. Ready? Yeah. Be- beware what you set your heart upon, mm-hmm. for it surely shall be yours. <laughs> the secret. <laughs> okay. The power of intention. <laughs> I don't know if that's exactly what he was getting at. It might be. That's how, that's how I read that. The way that I, I read that differently. A little All bit right. differently. Tell me. Yeah, I mean, I, I honestly, I, I never looked into that the secret thing and all of that. But I don't know if I entirely agree with that premise that you know, you get whatever you want. You get whatever. <laughs> you get. You, yeah. But, well, it, well, in one sense I do, and in one sense I don't. And in the sense that I do is maybe what Ralph Waldo Emerson's getting into here. But um, and we're going to get into this in in the show today because this is going to tie into the theme. But the idea that, in one sense we're we're just mapping out our own path here and it's and it's what is it based on it's based on our desire like what we want you know it, 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 even the ability to lift my own hand you know is somehow granted to me right it's not like what can i do i'm this little spark of spiritual energy right and what is it that i'm actually capable of doing myself really all that we're capable of is desire right mm-hmm. and then from that point everything's manifested by by ma- the material energy it's it's carrying out everything right and it's not it's and ultimately not the, yeah i was gonna say and ultimately it's krishna behind that material energy so right. all we can do is desire and krishna responds to the god you know is responding to our desires now sometimes those desires may be f- fulfilled in the way that we pictured and sometimes it's fulfilled in other ways uh, that comes with other reactions and other messages but mm. really we get what we desire and in the 18th chapter of the Gita, it's got the five factors of action, mm-hmm. right? One is, what, do you know what they are? Oh, Mary? You know, time. <laughs> I'm throwing Mary. I'm <laughs> throwing <at> Mary. <laughs> <laughs> one, one is time. One is, uh, one is, des- one is your. The desire. One desire. Is, one is, uh, so there's certain the karma, things. We, yeah. The, the, yeah, the super soul place. One of them, I forget. Someone look those up. Yeah, Someone look those up for us. Five the place, factors. time, five factors of action. So, for sure, it's it's one of these things. Like, it's not the only thing, but it's definitely a thing. And I believe that you can refine. Like when you do goal setting, mm-hmm. it really affects your result. If you if because you, you start to change your direction, and your direction starts to change your destination. Um, and it may not come overnight, but if you have, I mean, here we're at Super Soul Farm. This this whole thing was like a, a brainchild 20 years ago, and it's just manifesting. It doesn't have to manifest. You need Krishna's will ultimately for your goals to come true, and you might have some uh, karma to deal with in in the process as well. But you can refine your uh, your desires, um, and of, and of course in the Gita. I, don't, I can't remember what number verse this yum yum bapi smaramba vam tiajanti anti kalevaram. I think. Yeah, whatever. It, um, what is it? Um, what? <laughs> <laughs> we don't know anything. <laughs> yum yum bapi smaram bhavam tiajanti kalevaram. That whatever one remembers at the time of death, surely to that state they'll they'll attain. In their next Does that birth. have anything to do with what we're talking about? It has a totally to do with what we're talking about. It's exactly what we're. Yes, oh, okay. I'm just picking up on myself. Because because the point the point is in one sense all we do is desire and ultimately the desire gets fulfilled. But there's two factors, right? There's the desire, and then you add that up with one. Other, there's one other thing that fits in with the equation, and then that gets punched into the thing and it comes out with the result. So there's the desire, our desire, and then there's our karma, our actions, right? And so, Eric, can you Google up five factors of action, please? Yeah, I got it. It's on the chat uh, board. The place oh, of did. action, which is the body, the performer, the various senses, the many different kinds of endeavor, de- endeavor, endeavor, and ultimately That's... the super soul. Okay. So, you know, the question of agency, like, you know, who's the cause uh, of something, you know, is, is always a big thing in philosophy or has always been. 
And uh, but you know, it, it, one sense you can simplify that form and say we desire, and ultimately God fulfills those desires. But they get fulfilled according. You know, it, it plays in with our karma. So like, say I desire. Really, life is just about refining our desires. Hmm. And and then you leave the body, and according to your desires, you get the next body. But it's not just your desires; it's also all the actions that you performed, right? In right. one sense, all of that shaped your consciousness. So, like, you have a particular desire that you want fulfilled, and then based on your car, it's just like say you want to get a car, right? Say Raghunath wants to buy a car. Mara mm -hmm. bought a car recently, right? She did. So you probably had a desire of like what kind of car electric you wanted. Car. You want an electric car, and if you had like unlimited funds you could go out and get the exact electric car that you wanted like if you could have had any car what would it have been there any car any car you got her dream car i probably would have gotten something faster like a maserati or something really is that right you would have gone maserati <laughs> okay interesting Very Hold interesting. Up that private girl but i'm a little more practical okay but you know your desire for a car was fulfilled but not the exact car that you wanted. So like, but if you're, if you had more money, you could have gotten the exact car. You could have gotten that Maserati. Mm -hmm. And so similarly, you know, we have desires and based on our car, you know, our karma is like our bank account. You know, it's, it's a bank account of merit. You could say, you know, of punya, nice way to say, put it. Right. Yeah. You have this bank account of punya uh, of, of like, um, me karmic merit. You know, sometimes it's like it goes negative even, right? We're in debt karmically, right? And so then, it, yeah. it's, it's, you know, so in any case, you know, you, you take on the next body based on your desire, you add to that, you know, the, the calculation of your karmic merit, and then you take on your next form. And so really, but really all life is about is that having that, if you, if we have that faith, it's particularly as like a practicing bhakti yogi, right? This idea that whatever I'm desiring, Krishna is giving me. And, and the, even the fact that like I'm doing this meditation and, and there's power behind that, let me be really careful what I desire, mm. right? And, and let me, and, so, and you know, if you go through Bhagavatam, so many of the prayers or so many of the songs of the great Bhakti Yogis, they're all about desire. You know, what is it that I want? All I want is you. Or when will that day come when all I want is you? you know, it, it's, there's a lot of that kind of expression. So we're going to get into that today because you know what's going to happen today, Raghunath? Uh, what? That that Prithu will be offered by Lord Vishnu any boon. Anything you want. Anything you want. Yeah, what, what do you want? You can have anything, Mara. Anything you want. Pure love of God. Maserati. Uh, Maserati! <laughs> <laughs> she traded in pure love of God for a Maserati. Yeah, you know, we, we have to, you know, but by daily hearing Bhagavatam, it's meant to kind of like help us refine our desires because, yeah, what is, what, what are those things? You know, we joke about that right now, like, right, what, Maserati, is that what you want? Or you want pure love of God, you know? But, but the fact is, you know, we are walking around with these desires in our heart. And, and the Vaishnava, you know, the Bhakti Yogi is just like getting rid of them, you know, just like analyze them, you know, seeing them for what they are. We mm. see that with Dhruva, right? He wanted something. He wanted something big. Yeah, right. kingdom bigger, you know, prestige and power, you know, more kingdom bigger than that of his father, who was like, you know, super, incredibly influential, and uh, and he did these austerities and and ultimately these yoga practices to get it, and then when he saw the form of Lord Vishnu, he realized what was I thinking, why why did I have these desires in my heart? He was embarrassed, you know, and so are we walking around with embarrassing desires in our heart and. Do we want to maintain those? Are we being v vigilant to remove them, to, to analyze them, and to recognize them for, for how paltry they are? Or do we even let them stay in there? And do we even like entertain them and kind of like say, oh, it's not so bad that it's there. Maybe I'm not even acting on it, you know, but that desire is still there. But that's okay, you know. Mm. It'll get fulfilled. You know, it'll get fulfilled. Mm. Hmm. What are Kostuba's desires? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Uh, anyway, interesting, interesting. Yeah, we shine. The Bhakti Yogi shines light. We, you know, we say, think it through. Think it through. Like, you got a desire? Think the whole damn thing through. Will it actually give you what you want? Or is it just sort of a, con a mental concoction of, 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 of happiness in the mind? Think it through. You know, uh, I remember once, did I ever tell you this? That Radha Swami told us, we were talking about the Twilight Zone. A television yeah. show, The Twilight Zone, which a lot of people no one remember. Remembers it it uh, to people. There are people that remember. But it was this. It was this television show that um, 
back in the late 50s and early 60s that uh, each show was a different set of characters in different circumstances, but each one had like a theme that you're meant to think about life. And it was like m mystically uh, supernatural. Played with all kind of, yeah, ideas. Yeah. And, uh, and I remember once we were talking about this and Rodna saw me said, I would not discourage someone from watching that show because there are very important messages, you know, you know, Marge was recommending the Twilight Zone. It was it well. I think he worded it very carefully. Where he wasn't exactly the recommending it, but he said I wouldn't. Right he, he said I wouldn't discourage someone from from watching it. He said it like that. All the people from Maharashtra, Twilight Zone, googling. Twilight but Zone. Did you ever see that one where there's there's this couple and they they live in um, the, the, it's like an elderly couple. I I haven't watched that many Twilight Zones. So if you really? think you're gonna, you didn't stay up late and watch the Twilight Zone when you're a kid. No. Okay. Went to bed after Mannix. Okay, go on. <laughs> so, so there's this one where there's this elderly couple and they run like a little, kind of like a little thrift shop or something like that, you know? And uh, you, you could, you know, there, you can this tell. This better be good, man. Because you're about to go off on a Maha squirrel right now. It's not now. at all a squirrel. It's right on subject okay, right, right now. If you could be a little patient, you no, might I'm trust listening. me a little bit. And, I'm listening. You know. so, so they run this little thrift shop. And, and, you know, the, in their conversations, you can see that they're like under a lot of financial pressure, you know, that hardly anyone's coming into their shop and so on. And at the beginning of the, um, at the beginning of the, of the show, I think the man makes a mistake. He's like mopping the floor, sweeping up and, and with the broom, he, he breaks like a, a glass display case, you know, the, 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 the yeah. glass pane in the display yeah. case. And he's like, Oh God, I can't even afford to fix this thing. And, you know, and, uh, it, I think it was even like one of those Aladdin lamps that he had in there or something like that. And he was rubbing it and the genie came uh -huh. out. Okay. So that's like, <laughs> that caught your interest, right? So I was rubbing out the perk like. off. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. So the genie comes out and that's kind of like what we see in Bogtown, right? It's not, you know, it's kind of like, I can offer you boons. What do you want? Right. I think, I don't know where the idea of the genie comes from, but you know, like, oh, you wow. know, yeah. But, but in other words, like, I guess in the Western, you know, literary tradition, there's that idea, right, of the genie, and it's the same kind of idea. What do you want? And let's play with that idea of our desires. Are they healthy? Are they beneficial? You know. Mm -hmm. So you know, the the genie kind of comes out and says, well, you know, I can offer you three boons, anything you wish. You know, and and mm -hmm. he's all skeptical. You know, like you know, the couple is skeptical, like oh, this is a joke, forget it. And then he said, okay, we'll fix the window pane right there and he just goes Vroom, and the thing just whoosh, is restored to look and they're like oh my god <laughs> you know it's like it's, yeah. this really works you know we, and we only have two left so let's be real careful what do we want you know and so they're talking about it, they're thinking about it you know what, what are we going to wish for and they he they kind of do this thing like Hiranya Kashipu where you're like you, you say all you know like they're thinking well we're going to ask for something but you know they're thinking carefully about um refining that desire you know like um very clearly spelling out what they want and i forget all the things that they said but he said i want to be the leader of a powerful nation that, that cannot that cannot be removed from office you know that, are we on the twilight zone we're talking about harani kashipu well that's what i'm saying it was like harani kashipu he, he started going down a list of things and, and and so it was all these things about leadership can't be removed from office and, if, and it, if there's like a few more things like that. Can't be killed by a man or a beast uh, up in the sky or the land. Yeah. And, and, you know, the genie, he's like saying, now, now be sure that this is actually what you want. You know, is this really what you, your heart desires? You know, and so on. And so he spells out this whole list and then he says, okay, then here you go here. You can have it. And then the next thing you see is you see like this, this, um, the back of a head of someone sitting behind a desk. Mm. and someone walks in and starts to speak to him and it's a person in uniform and they're saying they're surrounding us you know it's like th there's no way out or something like that you know it's like you know like all of our you know all of our um you know all of, on on this front we've been defeated and this i forget exactly what it was you know and then the person turns yeah. around and it's that man you know the shop owner but he's yeah. got like a Hitler mustache, you know? Everyone's obsessed with Hitler. <laughs> well, it wasn't obsession with Hitler, but in other words, he had become like an Adolf Hitler and he, all his desire, his desire was totally fulfilled. Everything that he wanted, he got. Right. But it didn't lead to the happiness that he was expecting. It led to a, a miserable condition.
Very interesting. Anything like that? Right? Very interesting. Okay. I wish I could have told told it better. It just came to my mind, and it's been a very long time since I've seen it. But well, so okay. so you know, it's kind of Let's like Twilight Zone night. Oh yeah, we could do that. Well, yeah, you could do it at Super Soul Farm. Yeah, let's get, I got a projector. I'm going to project it outside, popcorn. Oh, that could be 4th of July. Yeah. You could do, you give a little commentaries on it. I in. <laughs> Airports afterwards. Yeah. But, um, but in any case, in one sense, life is very much like that. You know, in other words, it's a question. Our desires are fulfilled. Let's be really careful about what we desire. Bhakti Yoga is all about refining one's desire, purifying one's desire. And so that's going to play out throughout the box. Unless you want to dive in? Yeah. What are the most Krishna conscious television shows? Oh. Like, well, like, <laughs> that, like, well it's like, definitely not the love boat, Raghunath. Okay. Definitely not the love boat. <laughs> yes. Although maybe the, the love boat was like, was that about, uh, you get all, no, that was Fantasy Island. Fantas that came on right afterwards, Fantasy Island. Yeah, that, that was probably a similar thing. That was thing, more right? like mystic yoga. But yeah. was, it, was it similar? Like people come there with the desire, but then they kind of learn a lesson, like, yeah. And yes. Were there were designed. lessons. Maybe that. Maybe, maybe Fantasy Island was really uh, the most Krishna conscious TV <laughs> show from our generation. <laughs> All right. Narayanam namaskritya naram chayva narotamam devim saraswatim vyasam tato jayam madiraye. Before he said in the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, our very means of conquest, which should offer respectful obeisances to the Supreme Lord Narayan. Unto Narayan and Ryan Rishi, the supermost human being. Unto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning. Unto Shula Vyasadeva, the author. Nasta Prayeshva Vadreshu Nityam Bhagavat Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtiki. By regular attendance and classes in the Bhagavatam and by rendering service to the pure devotees, all that is troublesome to the heart will become eradicated. And loving service to the Supreme Lord, who is praised with transcendental songs, will be established as an irrevocable fact. Om Jnana Tamarandasya Jnana Janasalakaya Chaksurun Mudutam Yena Tazmaye Shri Gurave Maha. I was born in the darkness of ignorance. My teachers are opening my eyes with a torchlight of knowledge. I offer my obeisances at their lotus feet. You know, I just remembered. I think I think I remember the story a little bit better right now. Uh oh, he's back. Last second squirrel. <laughs> Last second squirrel. Last second squirrel. <laughs> but I think what happened was the first the first wish they wasted on on that fixing the window right yeah and so then the second one i think they said money you know it's like we want money or something like that and and and, and they get all the money that they want but immediately like it's like taxes take away like half of it and they lose it somehow like it just disappeared as quick as this came i think it was something like that i said that happens with people that win the lottery google that man. Of it. yeah google lottery winning loss and <laughs> and something. then um uh, and then uh, so then when it came to that third wish, which was their last wish, they really started, you know, that's why they came up with all the stipulations, you know, because they were, okay, we're going to make a, this wish, but we're not going to get cheated out of what we really want. And they came up with all the stipulations. Then he turned into Hitler. Or maybe they had one more wish, and he said, I want to just go back to normal or something like that. And then he came back to normal. And then they had exhausted all their wishes. And then, like, the last scene, he's, like, sweeping up again, and he, he breaks the glass again, and they're right back to where they started. Oh, that's sad. Well, it was it wasn't sad exactly. It was kind of ironic, or it's, you know, it's kind of yeah. It's kind of like, hey, we don't need you to just wish for something things. practical. Uh, well, that, that's what they did in the first one, I suppose, right? Yeah. But no, right, what Raghu. we wish for is pure devotion. Okay. Okay, okay, wait, what do you Mara's, got there? Mara's got a squirrel here. <laughs> I mean, this is from the internet, but they say lottery winners are more likely to declare bankruptcy within three to five years than the average American. Look at that, Ragnar. You see, wow. you get your desire fulfilled, and, and they, they know you're going bankrupt. They squander it. Squandered. Right. Yeah. Imagine if you just got a bunch of money, and all of a sudden, all of these people are asking you for money. If you won the lottery, I'd be asking you for money because I just want you to know that. <laughs> I, I would give you some if I won the lottery. I'd be like, can I have twenty? Give you a lot twenty of money. bucks. I'd be like, can I have twenty bucks? <laughs> I would give you more. <laughs> But you, okay. can, I can't believe this hasn't gone somewhere yet, Raghunath. I haven't believed this hasn't gone somewhere yet. I'm going to keep this secret and see if it goes there. What are you talking about? I'm not going to tell you. What's he talking about? What <laughs> I got him all confused now. Well, did you write a song? I can't remember. Perfection Which, of Desire. Did there? you have a song called Perfection of Desire? Oh, yeah. Perfection of Desire. I had an album. Okay. 
that's where you thought I was going to take this whole show. Yeah, I'm surprised it hasn't gone there yet. Well, it's a it's a good title. It's it's about uh, you know not suppressing desire. You can't suppress desire. Mm -hmm. Like in Buddhist thought, we understand desire causes our pain. We're, we're chasing you, you know chasing mirages, and in that chase, it exhausts us, and ultimately doesn't even give us what we want. And but the Vaishnava says, you can't suppress desire. We by our very self are desire. The very mm -hmm. entity that we are will desire. So instead of trying to trying to put a lid on it. You just refine what you're desiring. Okay. I like that. Instead of putting a lid on it, don't put a lid on it. You can't put a lid on it. You blow. Like, How long can you just like not desire? And what kind of life is that anyway? I'm with you. Right? Yeah. You're sick of eating junk food. I get it. Don't eat junk food. Desire healthy food. Refine your desires. <laughs> don't I put get a lid it. on it. Perfect it. Mirror's like, hashtag, ooh, take away, <laughs> this is <been> crazy. <laughs> All right, we got to get to the Bhagavatam, please. What, what verse are we on, guys? <laughs> look, look at this guy. We were on Canto 4, Chapter 20. We're still on the purport of Text 14. Uh, we're on Chapter 18? No, Chapter 20. Chapter 20. Why don't we just go ahead and jump to Text 15? Okay. So Vishnu is speaking to Prithu. Why are you looking confused? You don't know what you, <laughs> you know, over chapter. Right chapter right 20, right. text 15. Pulled up an old. There you, go. you got it. All right. I got to I'm here. 15. So Lord Vishnu is, he just gave, he just gave some okay. really relevant um, instructions to Prithu in text 13. He mm -hmm. gave him four instructions, right? He said, treat people equally. That was nice. Yes. Be equipoised in happiness and distress. Be cool. Control your mind and senses. Important. And protect the citizens. Just do it. And, and, and he said that um, if, and this is important because one sixth of their karma you're going to get, right? If they, mm. if, they, if they start to behave well in, in ways that are beneficial for themselves and others and so on, you get one sixth of that. But if they but if they don't, if they go the other direction, well, you're going to have to pay the price for that. So take your take this responsibility really seriously. You, know? you think the parent gets one sixth of the karma of the child? I've never heard that mentioned, but uh, seems yeah, but like it would fit into the similar equation. It, it does seem like they're responsible for how they raise the children, right? Yeah. Lord Vishnu continued, my dear King Pritu, if you continue to protect the citizens according to the instructions of the learned Brahmana authorities, mm -hmm. as they are received by disciplic succession, by hearing from master disciple, and if you follow the religious principles, right, the Dharma, Dharma laid down by them, right, without attachment to ideas manufactured by mental concoction, okay. then every one of your citizens will be happy and will love you and will very soon... Uh, and very soon you'll be able to see such already liberated personalities as the four Kumaras. You'll and that's going to see happen. them. They'll just yeah. show up. They're going to show up. Yeah. So he's saying, you know, there, there's a handbook for how to live in this world and how to lead in this world, right? There's so a if, handbook. There's yeah, an there's instruction manual. manual. Yeah. Planet Earth manual. You know, this is how you do things. And so he's saying, follow the manual. It's, it's, it's really wise and it's good. And if you just do that, everything's going to work out. And if you don't do that, and if you go, you know, if you concoct different ideas, yeah, then it's, it gets troublesome. Or you just don't get the full use out of the thing you're like, for example, when you buy a car, mm -hmm. there's like a little book that goes with it, like how to use all that stuff on your dashboard. Some but people are just don't like, even read it. Ah, I got this figured out and <laughs> just throw it in the glove compartment <laughs> and never, never, ever look at it. But then then, you know, it's like a. You know, time to move the clocks back an hour and you can't figure out how do you move the clock back and what are all these things on my dashboard anyway it's not like it's okay you can drive the car you can get from a to b it's just not as efficient and as effective as you can the whole vedic teachings are a manual right mm -hmm. how to sit how to breathe how to move the the power of thoughts right uh, what to consume when to consume it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Duties, responsibility, Astrology. the stars, <laughs> the celestial bodies. Where to where to build a house? And which direction should face? Novice. Where should your kitchen be? Huh? You Novice. know that? Where should your kitchen be? Do you well, know that? 
in the east? Never, I don't know. <laughs> ever. No! In the west. In the west. Never in the northeast. Never in the northeast. No, that is where um, Vastu Peru sits. What are they called? The Vastu Purusha. Yeah, yeah the, the Vastu the, Purusha. Vastu Purusha. That's where, that's where the fire happens. If you have a, if you're, you're going to have an angry household because there's the too fire. much heat already there. If you have the fire right in the, the, the Vastu Purusha. Yeah, yeah, it's a yeah, problem. So, so the idea is they expect, would lay, expect arguments with your spouse. It's like they they call it the the Vedic feng shui, the, the this vastu. It's like how to design architectural, how to design buildings and so on, so that the best vibes are flowing through there. And they have the vasta purusha. It's kind of like the design of a human, a person, a purusha. Mm. And they kind of he sits in a particular way, and they kind of design the house around that vasta purusha, right? That person. It's, it's interesting how all this architecture of the ancient world was all built around Vastu. All over the world. It all had to do with celestial bodies. You don't just like, you don't plow down a forest and put up Levittown, Long Island. It's not that. Everything is completely directed towards um, heavenly bodies. You know, sometimes you go into a building that's designed that way. And it feels feel it right. right. It oh, feels yeah. right. I remember sometimes you, drive, sometimes you drive by a house and you're like, this something's off of this house. You don't yeah. even know. Right, right Mara? Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for your feedback, Mara. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes, <laughs> Um, But uh, you know where I felt that maybe more than any other place, Rogna? Super Soul Farm. <laughs> no, it wasn't Super Soul Farm. Super Soul Farm does have that vows too. Does it? It wasn't, in it wasn't intentional, but when you drive by, you're like, this is nice. Feels good. Feels yeah. good. No, no, definitely feels good there. But I was thinking of the uh, Guru Vayur Temple in Kerala. You know, I've, I've never been there. You've never been there. You trying oh to like God. you walk into that place? I, I remember I told you about that before. I talked about it on the show where you walk in and they're grinding all oh. the sandalwood. You know, is that the, the place where they found the Brahma Samhita? No, no, that's the Adi Keshava Temple down okay. in, in down in. Uh, I mean, all those temples were built with cordon bleu. They look, they look like they're, they look completely. Yeah, yeah, you feel special. it in those places, right? You feel, you feel it. Yeah, yeah, no question. Yeah. No question. Remember when we went there? We went to the Adikeshwar Temple. I didn't go with you. You didn't? I went to the Janardan Temple with you. <laughs> well, we and got kicked so out we, of the Janardan Temple. That's where the guy almost hit me with. Someday we're gonna talk about that. That story. I almost got me and all my students beat up with a bamboo pole. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that was a good, that was a good one. <laughs> all righty, let's continue on. Yes, text. All right. 16. So, text sixteen. My dear King, I am very captivated by your elevated qualities and excellent behavior, and thus I am very favorably inclined towards you. You mm. may therefore ask from me any benediction you like. Mm, you can have whatever you like. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> one who does goes. not possess elevated qualities and behavior cannot possibly achieve my favor simply by performance of sacrifices, severe austerities, or mystic yoga. But I That's always really remain equipoised. Hmm. I always remain equipoised in the heart of one who is also equipoised in all circumstances. It might be the final test before you go back to the gods, right? I'm going to give you whatever you want. You can have whatever mm -hmm. you want. What do you want? And you got to be yeah. able to pass that test. It's kind of like... You, in order to to be reestablished in your eternal position, right, and in 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 and in order to kind of like um, commune with the divine eternally in beautiful varieties of of uh, loving adventure, you just <laughs> you just don't get in there. loving adventure. <laughs> loving adventure, it's Lila, right? In order to in order to enter into that, you have to have a pure heart. You, it, it works because everyone that's because the love is pure right that realm is a realm of pure love and it works it's so special and wonderful because there is nothing there but pure love without any selfish desire and as long as you're maintaining any selfish desire you don't fit in mm. so it's kind of like what going back to ralph waldo right whatever you want you can have do you want nothing but pure love then then you're you're as soon as you're there you're ready to enter but if there's other desires in your mind and heart, well, then you can have that in the material realm, right? In, in the virtual reality and, and, and play that out as long as you want. And as soon as you're ready to say, I don't want this anymore. All I want is pure love. You're, you're, We're going to give you a hint. Right We're going to give you a hint. If you choose that one, the latter one, it's got a lot of pitfalls. It's got a lot of sinkholes. It's got a lot That's of right. mouse traps. 
right? <laughs> mouse and glue trap. You just got to think it through. Like that one mouse trap. The material world is like a place filled with mouse traps. That was a game too, right? When we were kids. You're the mouse. mouse. Trap. That was a good game. <laughs> it was like a Rube Goldberg. Do you know what Rube Goldberg is? No. Mary, you know? Yeah. But isn't Rooney always making those things? Yeah, my son always makes Rube Goldbergs. It's like it's like what mousetrap is. You drop this and it knocks over this. All those things. For it rolls right. down yeah. that. And yeah, that's a Rube Goldberg. Okay, It's a thing. Google yeah, it. So, so, so the idea, he, he says a lot of interesting things here. He, he started off by saying, I'm very captivated, captivated by your elevated qualities. All right. Like, in other yeah. words, you're, what is God moved by? Later on, he's going to say, I'm not moved by sacrifices by you know like ritual mm -hmm. i'm not moved by severe austerities that doesn't t you know you, that may the devas may have to respond to that right like hiranyakashipu will read later he does extreme yogic austerity and the devas have to come and like kind of respond to that okay you know that was that was pretty impressive <laughs> tell right. me what you want and, and i'm going to hand it over um mystic yoga even that raghunath you know, you may get the benediction to be able to fly, become lighter than the lightest. You may get the, you know, these are things that the Vedic literature speaks about, you know, and, and they require incredible determination, you know. Determination that you become superhuman, but it does not please the personality of God. He's like, that doesn't, that doesn't, I'm not impressed at all, right? Not, not impressed. But, but what it, it does. It can all be done out of ego, even austerities. Ego. Yeah. Even severe austerities can be done out of ego. Right, but it was his qualities, you know. It was his, it was his, the purity of of his character, that was impressive. And um, and then he says at the end here, I always remain equipoised in the heart of one who is equipoised in all circumstances. Think about that. And, and in a sense, if you you could read that the negative way, right? In other words, like if I'm not equipoised in all circumstances, then in a sense, God's not present in my heart, at least not in my awareness, right? What do I do about this? No, all serious aside, all serious. Okay. I'm, I'm so not equipoised. Mm -hmm. Mary, you know, Rachel, you know this. Yeah. I'm like an emotional wreck often, often. I'm not equipoised. Why not? I've been doing this. <laughs> I've, been doing, I've been playing this game for a while. Why well, aren't you know, I more people, equipoised? People, people do. In one sense, equipoised means, in one sense, equi you could call it equipoised if you're, desires are always focused on Krishna, whether they're hot or cold in one sense. And even that's like the higher equipoise, right? Like always poised on Krishna. So work on that, Raghunath. I think that that's your way. I just got to be emotional in front of my deities. Yeah. Just pour it out. And then be more equipoise. That's equi I guess service. you're right. I guess e even in times of distress, if you're just like, Krishna, that's yeah. okay. That's equipoise. Yeah, you can be crying one minute and laughing the next minute. If it's all on Krishna, in one sense, that's a higher equipoise, right? Poised mm, yeah, equally right, always okay. on Krishna. But, but, you know, generally the yogi is even externally relatively equipoised, right? In, in other words, yeah, and you are like this in many ways, Raghunath. I've seen many times where it's like, like let's say the... Um, the pilgrimage is falling apart, <laughs> right? Like, like people are starting to get sick and some people are getting a little upset or, you know, you're whatever. really selling like, my pilgrimage for me. Thanks. Well, no, no, like <laughs> India, India is starting to wear someone down, you know, and like, there's a little, um, what do they call it? You know, amongst the ranks where they call it like a little, um, <laughs> you know, Descent. lack of descent among the ranks or whatever and then but then but and, and and that's a time where like someone like you know like in your position you could start to lament get angry or whatever but you're equipoise you're like this isn't a problem we just you know turn on the the bhakti and, and everything's fine Have a so like, on. yeah it's like so i think in many ways you are equipoise but although by nature you're also like you know emotional and expressive but in Thank any you, case Bruce. Yeah, sure. Right. So, 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 but, but think about that though. Like if I'm materially non-equipoised, right? If, if when it's hot one day and, I, and I'm, you know, feeling one way and, you know, complaining or cold the next day, you know, it's, I'm going through upset. I can't keep a certain steadiness throughout it all. Then in one right. sense, I'm, I'm letting at least my awareness of God within my heart just kind of dis disappear. But he says, I'm always remain equipoised in the heart of one who is equipoised in all circumstances. So, um, but here I, we By the it. way, my whole yeah. takeaway from that verse was, it's okay to be emotional as long as you direct your emotions towards Krishna. 
I'm upset yeah. about something. I poured that out to Krishna. I'm happy about something. I'm gr grateful to Krishna. There you, you go. Just be very emotional to Krishna. That's my takeaway from this okay. whole verse. Good, good. Although I don't know if the because verse... otherwise <laughs> it sounds like equipoise means I'm stoic. I have well, no. Fear. Generally, that's the way it's interpreted, right? Yeah. Here it says samachitta. You have the same chitta, the same. You know, it's similar to samadhi. All right. But yeah, Somebody. we keep it we keep it situated on Krishna, keep it the same, always on Krishna, whether it's pleasant or unpleasant, whether you're happy, whether you're crying or laughing, it's focused on Krishna. That's equipoise. How about our walk on Wednesday yesterday with Bobby Daya, the Sanskrit? Mm -hmm. These Sanskrit guys scare me. They're trying to always. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? They're always like, mm, you're not saying that right. <laughs> oh, oh, I see. <laughs> I'm scared to quote any verse yesterday. <laughs> um, so we could read this commentary, but here here we go. Like right, it's um. It's, it's quite frankly, how often this, it would be interesting to count how many times in Bhagavatam this happens, right? Whatever you want, you can have, you know. To It'd be very interesting. Theory. Yeah. You, you know, here in this, let's see, in this text it says, varam cha mat kanchana, it, it's saying varam, right? Boon, ask for benediction. You may therefore ask for me any benediction that you like, okay? Now, I did a little research on this, Raghunath. Yeah. So we also see in text 7952, this is Lord Nishring Dave, he's speaking to Prahlad. He says, Varam. He also starts there, right? Varam Vrinish Vabhi Matam. He says, he says this. It's really interesting what he says, Raghunath. Tell he me. says, Krishna says that um, Abhi Matam, he says, just ask for me, Abhi Matam, whatever you desire whatever vadam, whatever benediction you at what you want ask for me ask it for me who is kama puraha who fulfills everyone's desire mm -hmm. you know it, he says it is my pastime to fulfill the desires of all living beings and therefore you may ask for me any benediction that you desire to be fulfilled right it's my past that's what he does in one sense that's what krishna does you know you know if, what krishna if, really does fulfill he all does. desires I, yeah. I i i i personally can state that all your desires that you don't even know you have krishna will fulfill like i never thought that like that was my desire and now that desire is getting fulfilled and then and then yeah <laughs> and then sometimes he fulfills that desire by saying you know what you didn't even want that think about it you really want that it makes you like rationalize it makes you start to think well, it, yeah. it makes your desire go away. Like, like I don't actually even want that's that. That's the point, but right? He makes that desire go away. Well, that's the twilight I zone. Let's go back to the twilight zone, right? Like, this okay. guy, he he was he was like uh, he owned this little shop. He didn't make much money, and he's thinking, if I had more money, I'd be happy, right? Or can I, can, can I share? <laughs> finish, finish, finish. Gosh, I have an embarrassing you, story. You, you go ahead and share what you want to share, and we'll go back to the twilight zone. Okay, here's my story. Here's my story. I was like, uh, you know, you know, Parmananda and me were always in a band together when we were younger. And Parmananda was always jacked and ripped. And I was not as much. And he was always tan. Parmananda is one of these guys who's tan in January. Like, okay. I don't know how he does it. He finds where the sun is, positions himself, takes his shirt off, and he's, in, he's tan in January. So I was in my mind, I would be like, why can't they be more jacked and ripped like Parmananda? <laughs> why can't they be more jacked and ripped? <laughs> and so then I became a devotee. And now I'm working on the farm. Okay. Um, and now I was living at Gita Nagri. I was living at Gita Nagri and Sachi Sutta, Steve, Steve Reddy was with me, or I was with him. We we're at the farm and I'm moving hay bales. I'm like throwing hay bales. Steve's driving the tractor and I'm throwing hay bales. And we we're doing this for like a couple of <laughs> sounds weeks. like another one of your homoerotic kind of. Uh... It's not <laughs> okay, at all. Go. And I don't even know why you went there. <laughs> had nothing to do with the kangaroo either. Okay. Go it's go a real, ahead. it's a regular story. Um, anyway, I've got overalls on. I got my shirt off and I'm, <laughs> I'm covered in oil. No, I'm just kidding. Throwing hay bales. And I'm doing this all week. And I'm like looking at my body. I'm like, I'm getting, I'm getting jacked. I'm getting jacked. I'm getting ripped. And I'm getting tan. I'm like okay. tan and jacked. And I was thinking to myself, but I'm a brahmachari. I can't even use it. I can't even like enjoy it. So Krishna's giving me what I wanted, but... You can't it's enjoy it. You, you can, yeah, you, 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 you're, you're, you can have it, but you're not allowed to be the enjoyer. Mm -hmm. 
Isn't that interesting? Very interesting. Filling yeah, your desires. Yeah. But because why did I want it in the first place? I wanted it for my ego. You know something, Raghunath? What, that I, was a very deep realization, wasn't it? I, I'm, it's so deep. I was going to share some thoughts on it. Okay. Give, give me a. But, but I think, you know, we can go back and I will go back to the Twilight Zone in a minute. But a lot of what it means, I believe, to advance in spirituality. Yeah. It means you look at yourself and you laugh at yourself, right? Oh, my God, this is it. I've been so ridiculous for so long, just <laughs> wanting ridiculous things, right? You know, and it's kind of like, it's like, okay, now I'm jacked, but like I'm a brahmachari, <laughs> right? It's like, it's, and, and all you can really do is laugh, you know? And, jacked and tan. <laughs> I finally got what I wanted. And, I and it doesn't it. mean anything anymore. Yeah. And so you see, similarly, that's what happened in that twilight zone. You know, it, again, this is, this idea of the genie, I, I, again, I don't even know exactly where it comes from, but I assume it's it's a similar kind of um, it's a similar kind of, of this, Mara, theme. Where is Aladdin from? Yeah, where where does the genie Saudi the Arabia? bottle idea come from? They bought um, it. Disney bought it from somebody. But but I would assume originally even the story was kind of teaching that like we desire things that we think will make us happy, but really we just make fools of ourselves, and these this isn't what makes us happy. And so like at the end of that Twilight Zone, after. You know, first he wanted all this. He, he's a simple shop owner. Now he could be happy simply, right? And, and But he thinks, no, you know, I need money. And, and then he gets the money and it doesn't work out. Okay, you know what? I asked for something, but I wasn't careful enough how I asked. Right? I got to be, I can manipulate the material thing, and create the circumstance that I want, but I got to be more careful. I got to do more expertly. Mm -hmm. So this time he, 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 he says, I want to be a world leader. And I want this and that. And, and he gives us, he's more careful. I can manipulate this, right? And then it actually even makes it worse, right? Mm -hmm. And he becomes Hitler and he's about to be killed in the bunker and, and all this. And then he comes and then he, he uses his last wish and says, okay, just put me back where I was. I don't want to be here anymore. And now he's back in his shop. And uh, at least he's got the window, the, the glass window thing fixed, right? And then he he bumps into that and he breaks it again. He's right back to where he was. And the, and, the, and the husband and wife look at each other and laugh, right? It's like, we're fools, right? We don't need, we think these other things are going to make us happy. Ultimately, they, we get our desire, but we get it in a way which is meant to lead us to this truth, that that desire is not what makes me happy. Right, right. right. And so that's what Krishna's doing. When he says here, I fulfill all desires, if, if, if you don't have any selfish desire, and all you want is divine love, and all you want is to serve, then you enter into the realm wherein you experience the deepest loving ecstasies and, and adventures that, that you could, beyond what you could imagine. It's like, it's what you're designed to do. Um, but, but, if you, but if that's not what you desire, and you desire to be the big world leader that can't be removed <coughs> from office or to have tons of money, you know, these materialistic, selfish big desires. Big ripped farmer boy. Big ripped farmer boy. When you des what, what I mean, quite, quite frankly, what is the desire to be ripped and tanned? You basically desire to be Krishna, right? I want a beautiful form like Krishna. I want a beautiful complexion like Krishna. You know, Krishna is the one with the beautiful form and the beautiful complexion. And we want his opulence is for us. <clears throat> and if, if that's the way you're thinking, it's like, go ahead, play it out of the material realm and you'll get your desire fulfilled. But in the end, you're going to realize that, that that's, not what I, that's not what satisfies the soul. That's not what gives Atma supersidity. And so and that was uh, my realization going to an ashram. I don't want to live in the ego. It's caused me nothing but pain. And there yeah. Krishna is giving me what, what I actually wanted. And I realized this isn't what I want. This is at all. This is what I want. I, only, I wanted it for the wrong reasons. And so, so, so <coughs> that was we, an embarrassing story. <laughs> no, it was a good story. Right now. It was a good story. <laughs> and, um, and, and so again, in, in Nishringa says to, to Prahlad, just ask me any benediction. It's my pastime to fulfill desires. That's what I do. I'm the, but it's just, but the quality of that, the purity of that, it makes all the difference, right? And then back in the third canto, yes. you have uh, Kapila Dave speaking to Devahuti, right? And he, and he's, of course, but Kapila Dave is another avatar, another form of Krishna, you know, and he's explaining bhakti to his mother. And he says that although I offer all kinds of boons, to my devotees, they never accept them, right? They mm. even, even liberation, you know, he says a pure devotee does not accept any kind of liberation, salokya, sharshti, samipya, sarupya, or ekatva, even though they're offered. And, but then he says, but without my service, without my matsevanam, without my service, you know, 
So in other words, that's what they want. I'm not interested. And you know where that takes me, Raghunath? <laughs> where? We're talking about boons. This word vadam, right? We keep seeing this word, you know, benediction. It was in this verse. It was in the verse with Prahlad. Vadam, vadam deva moksham na moksha vadimba. Moksha vadimba. Next line. Right, you know that one, Rachel? You know that one, Rachel? No, you know it. Vadam deva moksha na moksha vadimba. <clears throat> That, O oh Lord, although you are able to give all kind of benedictions, I do not pray to you for liberation, right? Moksham. That's like, the, in one sense, that's the biggest boon. It's like beyond all the material boons. It's like I'm free, free from, from any material pain. suffering. It yeah. sounds good. <laughs> it sounds really good. That's great. I'm free from all pain. And so this is a prayer to, 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 uh, to Damodar, to Krishna, to little sweet baby Krishna. Right, that O oh Lord, although you're able to give all kind of benedictions, even moksha or even moksha vadim, even the highest liberation, life in Vaikuntha, I'm not even asking for that. I'm not asking for any boon for you. But then he says, "Idam teva purnata, Gopalabalam." Mm -hmm. All I want is to see this little form of you, or Gopalabalam. <laughs> this little form. <laughs> no, pal, that little cow friend, the Gopal. That's where we get the name pal from. In, in English, pal oh, means like a friend of the ghost. Nerd. Okay. Word nerd that one out. It all comes from Sanskrit. Okay. Friend Gopal the Balam, the little baby. The little baby Gopal. That's all I want. That's what says, my meditation yeah. wants to be. I don't want to live with Lord Vishnu. <laughs> I want to see. Iram te before not the Gopal Balam. Sada, all the time. May manasya virastam kimanya. I just want to my mind to be absorbed in in, in seeing and thinking about your form is sweet little baby Krishna running around, right? Stealing a little butter. That's what more could I want than this? He says, he what says, more? actually, he says, Kim Anyai. What's, what's the use of anything else? <laughs> <laughs> what's the use of anything else? That's from the Damodar Astika, right? Beautiful prayers to Lord Damodar. That was, that was beautiful. So it's, <clears throat> all, it's all about purifying our desire. As long as we want to be, that big world leader that can't be removed from office as long as we want to be you know, have tons and tons of money as long as we want to be jacked and tanned right then we can have that but you get it in such a way that desire will be fulfilled but it, in a way ultimately you become disappointed and you're meant to learn the lesson and you laugh at yourself right and learn the lesson that that's not what satisfies the heart and then you turn back to sweet little baby Krishna and he's looking at, he's got some butter in his hand. And he's just having fun. He's got not a worry in the world. And you say, what have I been doing? <laughs> you know, I'm sorry. I, I gave up this, you know, I gave up you for, for this stuff. No, all I want maybe, is your Maybe service. you should come up here, Kostuba, and we can throw some mm -hmm. hail, bail, bails <laughs> of hay around. Mara, any takeaways? <laughs> <laughs> throw some bales of hay, throw them, stack them. <laughs> we have off. Takeaways. Takeaways, quick. Sunny day. Be careful what you set your heart upon. Hackling each other. <laughs> Very careful, Ragnar. Please be careful. All that we're capable of of is desire. Not there you go. That's what we do. Karma. Yeah. Oh, is this a is a good one. A a Andrew and Kate have a good one. I hope you got that one. Right. <laughs> got it. Um, uh, Karma is a bank account of laughter. merit. I'm bright laughter, throwing hay at each other's faces. <laughs> Refine your desires. <laughs> okay. Uh, put a lid on it. Put a lid on it. Or don't put a lid on it. And purify it. Oh, yeah, that's right. Don't put a lid on it. Don't put a lid on it. Perfect it. Don't try to Perfect. hold back your desires. For yeah. Live them. Live them. Embrace your desires. <laughs> No. Be emotional. Refine your desires. Perfect your desires. There you go. Don't put a lid on it. Perfect <laughs> okay. them. All right. Do you want to continue with takeaways? <laughs> yeah, why don't you just take them? No, well, I'm just class. making sure the purport of the takeaway is in there. Okay. <laughs> Be emotional to Krishna. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Come on, people. Open your heart. Open it up. Uh, just turn on the bhakti. Just turn on the bhakti. Turn on the bhakti. Advancing in spirituality is laughing at yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's part of it. Right? Yeah, you got to laugh. You got to be able to laugh at yourself. Watch out for mousetraps. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mater- how about the points? material? How about the material mouse tra- the mouse traps of yeah, material yeah. existence? The mouse traps of material existence. There you sure. go, Raghunath. Perfect. Think it the, through. The glue traps. The glue <laughs> traps of material existence is actually better. Okay. Sure, probably. Because the glue is like you're in it, <laughs> yes, you can't probably. get out of it. You, that's what the material world is a glue trap. Yes. You're probably. suffering. What about the old fashioned okay. mouse traps which just snaps on you? It really hurts. Yeah, I think people, I think mice and mouse traps are suffering too. <laughs> well, I think that glue I think glue traps are more suffering. Because it's like yeah, torture. They torture. Starve. Mouse trap yeah. is like I don't mind dying in a mouse trap. Like not a bad way to go. Whack me in the head, kill me like that. Not so bad. Well, maybe it just breaks your back and you lie there and suffer for a long time. Oh, that's a good point. I got a feeling it kills them. Okay. They're pretty powerful. All right, we got to get off this topic. Right. Yeah, really. Why do you bring us here? It's something positive. Bro. Let's bring uh, it higher. Yeah. Jacked, tan, and disappointed. Oh, <laughs> that could be my t-shirt. There you go. That's a good one. Yeah. I'll wear that t-shirt, Jacked. <laughs> 